Okay, in this video, this is chapter six, the start of differentiation. A uh, differentiation is a pretty big unit. Um, I think it's like three chapters, maybe even four. Um, so chapter six basically just introduce you to the basics of differentiation. Um, some of this we've already covered when we were um, preparing for the mock exams y'all took. So this should be a pretty simple chapter. Um, it's relatively quick. Um, we will actually probably finish it in this video. Um, basically, chapter six is showing you this the basic power rule of how to take a derivative and also just getting you familiar with terms and notations. Okay, so chapter six, vocab and notations, um, a gradient. You should already be familiar with a gradient. Gradient is just the steepness of a curve at a given point. So remember, in coordinate geometry, gradient is slope, and you can only take the slope of a straight line. So what differentiation and calculus is, is when we're dealing with curves. So how do you take, um, how do you find the derivative of an equation to give you the gradient or the slope of a curve? So gradient and tangent, as far as derivatives go, is pretty much the same thing. The gradient of the curve at the point you are given is the tangent. So here is our curve. If we pick at any point along that curve, so that point there for example, and we draw a line so that it only touches the graph at that point. That is a tangent. Uh, you might even remember that from quadratics. If it has one root, it means it only touches the curve at one spot. It was tangent. So this is a line. So just like in coordinate geometry, you will have an equation of the line. So the tangent is normally going to be some kind of expression, some kind of equation. The gradient comes from taking the x point and plugging it into the tangent. Okay. So the blue line is the tangent, and the tangent will be an equation. Once you plug in the point that you are looking at, into that a tangent equation, you will have the gradient at that point. So the gradient is just going to be a value, a number. The tangent is an actual expression. Then we have what's called the normal. The normal is the line that is perpendicular to the tangent that passes through that same point. So here's our curve. The blue lines are tangent. And the normal goes through that same point but it's perpendicular, so it means it's 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what we mean by the normal. So if you're asked to find the equation of the tangent or the equation of the normal, you would still use the same point. And you would find the tangent, and if you remember, perpendicular slope, which is opposite inverse. Okay, you'll see that shortly. And the last piece of vocab is what we call the chord. Um, if you see that word, all that means is it's just a line that's joining two points. So any two points on a curve, you draw a line to connect them. That's what they mean by a chord. Okay. All right, some notation. So you're familiar with y equals f of x. So that's always going to be the expression for a function. So when we're dealing with derivatives, we call that y prime. Y prime means the derivative of Y. Or if you're using the F of X notation, F prime of X. Okay? Now, in order to take derivatives, you have to have exponents. You can't take the derivative without an exponent. So, if you have any expression that looks like these, for example. If you have 1 over the expression with your variable in the denominator, Remember, you can use negative coefficients. So you can write 1 over x as x to the negative 1. Also, square root, that's when you use fractional exponents. So the square root of x is x to the 1 half. Okay, And no matter what this looks like, if you have 1 over x cubed, you just write this with a negative exponent instead. And if you have anything other than a square root, say a cube root, 
Okay, a square root is x to the one half, a cube root is x to the one third, okay, and so on. If you have a fifth root of x, then it'll be x to the one fifth, okay? So when you're taking derivatives, you have to have wherever the variable's at, the variable has to be expressed with exponents. Okay, some other notation you might see for derivative is dy dx. I mean, same thing as y prime. However, this notation is going to be used for other stuff in later chapters. Um, this is just a very basic expression, means the derivative of y. That's what this means, but this one's actually a little bit more useful when it comes to um, more in-depth problems like rate of change. So the way you read this is you read it as the derivative of y with respect to the variable x. Okay, The derivative of y with respect to the variable x. So that means when you're taking the derivative of something, say the function y, we only care about things that have x with it. If it doesn't have an x, like if it's a constant or it has some other variable, then it's going to just go to zero. Okay. You also might see, instead of dy dx, you might see it as written as delta y, delta x. Um, means the same thing. Delta means change in. So when we did like kinematics and we did change in velocity, sometimes we use delta v. Uh, means pretty much the same thing. But you won't see this so much. But if you do, now you know it just means the same thing as that. But as far as this book goes and pure math, y prime, We'll start off using, but eventually we'll just go straight to this. All right, here's some uh, formulas you're going to need. So if we're taking derivative of a quadratic, so if you know, if you notice it right away as a quadratic, it will always, the derivative will be given by 2ax plus b, okay? So whatever constants you have for a, b, and c, if it's to the squared, so if it's a, a quadratic, this would be the answer. Now anything else, you're going to use this formula. So if you have some number times x to a power, so that will always be n times a times x to the n minus one, okay? As we do some examples in a minute, you'll see the use of this. Um, you don't really need to know this because you can just always apply this, but if you notice that it is a basic quadratic, then you just go ahead and use this formula. Okay, so let's use the formula. So let's start with the first example here, find the derivative of the following. x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. So using the formula above, let me pull that back down right here. So anytime you have multiple terms, you just apply this to each term individually. Okay, so we take the exponent here, 3. We're going to bring it down in front. And we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. So we get a 2. And then continue on. Bring the 2 here down in front. So we have 2 times 3, which is 6, and subtract 1 from the exponent. And the next one, this is an exponent of 1. So we bring the 1 down. We have negative 4. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have x to the 0 here. And anything to the 0 power is just 1. And then we have a constant. So any constant always goes to 0. So it's just plus 0. So this is f prime. Okay, let's look at the next example. We have 2 times the square root of x. So remember, in order to take the derivative, you have to have a exponent. And remember square root of x. So we're going to just rewrite this first as 2x to the 1 half. Now we'll take the derivative of that. So our f prime, we take the 1 half, we bring it down. We have 1 half times 2. x 
one half and we subtract one. Okay, simplify this a little bit. Half of two is one. And then one half minus one is a negative one half. So you are derivative is x to the negative one half or if you wanted to write that without negative exponents and fractional exponents remember what negative exponent means negative exponent means write it as a fraction so bring it underneath and then the fractional exponent means a root so we have a little bit of both so we have one over square root of x but this is fine as well unless it says write without exponents you would use that. All right, in the last example here, we have x or 9 over x. Okay, so once again, let's rewrite this. Remember, if it's under a fraction, we write it with a negative exponent. So we have x or 9x to the negative 1. So now we can take our derivative. So we have the negative 1, bring it down, times 9, it's negative 9, and then subtract 1. So that's our derivative. Okay, now let's look at some um, more examples. These are going to be a little more in line with what you might see as far as ace questions. Um, this might be just one part of an ace question. And you will see this type of question quite a bit. So find the equation of the tangent. They also might ask find the equation of the normal. So that's bringing in a little bit of coordinate geometry. Okay, so find the equation of the tangent of the graph at the point where x equals 9. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you first, if we want to find the equation of the tangent, we need to find the expression for the tangent. And remember, the expression for the tangent is the derivative itself. Well, we just took the derivative of that in a previous example. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that down. Uh, remember that was um, x to the negative one-half. Okay, so we have an expression for the tangent. So, remember, in order to find an equation of a line, you have to have at least one point, and you have to have the gradient. So, we have an x value. So, how do we get the y value? Well, we just plug this into there. So, when x is 9, y is 2 times the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So, our point is 9, 6. Okay, so we have the point, and where's the gradient going to come from? Remember, if you have the tangent, you plug in a value for x to get the gradient. Okay, so y prime, when x is 9, it's 1 over, remember, so negative exponent and a fractional exponent. So it's 1 over 9, square root of 9, which is just 1 over 3. So this is our slope. That's our gradient. Okay, so we have our gradient and we have our point. Now we can just use the formula for equation of line. y minus y1 equals x, or m my, times x minus x1. Okay, now you can just simply simplify this. So 1 third x. 1 third times 9 is negative 3. Then we're going to add 6. So it gives us a positive. And then if they wanted it written without the fractions, you just multiply by 3. So either one of those is fine. Okay, now let's look at another example. Find the equation of the normal at the point 1, 2. So now they give us the point. All we really need is the slope of the normal. Okay, on this graph. So, slope of the normal. So if you remember back to those first few notes uh, for a tangent and normal, okay, the normal is perpendicular to the tangent at the same point. So if we find the slope of the tangent, we just do the opposite inverse to get the slope of the normal. Okay. So we still have to find an expression for the tangent. We still have to plug that x value into that expression to get the gradient of the tangent. And then we just do opposite inverse to get the gradient 
of the normal. So let's first go ahead and find y prime. So the derivative of x, so the power here is 1, bring 1 down. So we just get a 1. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So x to the 0 is just 1. So our first term is just 1. Now we have x to the negative 1. So we're going to bring down the negative 1 and then subtract 1. So our y prime is 1 minus x to the negative 2. Okay? So that's our tangent. That's the expression for our tangent. So to get the gradient, we're going to plug 1 into here. Okay? So 1 minus x to the negative 2, which is just 1 over x squared. And 1 over 1 is just 1. So we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So there is no slope for the tangent. Okay, so it means it's probably just a flat line. So you have a graph and a tangent like this. Okay, so the tangent's just flat. So, but the opposite inverse is undefined, right? Because if you take, remember perpendicular slope is negative 1 over m. So if we plug in 0 here, we get negative 1 over 0. Well, anything divided by zero is undefined. So the slope of this point is undefined. So if that's a zero, the normal will always be undefined. So what does that mean? Well, that means we can't find an equation of normal because there isn't. It's just going to be whatever the x value is here. So the equation of the normal is just x equals one. That's that line there. So if this is our graph and that's x equals 1, there's the normal. Okay, so I wanted to show you this example because sometimes that will happen. The tangent, if it's always on the bottom or if it's on top, it will have a slope of 0, which means the normal is going to be undefined. When that happens, it's just whatever the x value is. If it's not, then you would just take the slope here to opposite inverse. And then you would do the equation of a line. You would use this point and the slope to get the equation of the normal. Okay, so I hope that was um, pretty clear, pretty helpful. Um, that was pretty much it for chapter six. Uh, some of the homework's just going to be doing that, uh, taking very simple derivatives and finding the equation of the tangent or the normal. Okay, so your assignment for chapter six, it is posted on Microsoft Teams. Um, it's miscellaneous chapter six, one, three, seven, nine. Now I'm using a different textbook than the one you have. So it might be different numbers. So don't use the textbook you have. I, there is a picture of these questions posted. So just go there and use those questions. You don't have to use your book. Um, it will be due tonight by midnight. So this is your assignment for today that is going to be counted for your attendance and your points for today. It is 10 points. Um, work out your problems. Take a picture of them, or if you have a scanner, scan them. Just make sure the picture is very clear. And then just upload them uh, to the Assignments tab on Microsoft Teams. Okay, if you have any questions, email me.